Hello, I'm Alan Metcalf, and this is Conversations on Safe Worlds TV. And once again, we finally caught up with those rambling, roving characters, Lindsay and Marilyn, as they're on their road trip around or across Australia and up the Queensland coast. And we finally located them. They've, uh, I, I think they've already made it up to near Mackay in far north Queensland, where they're visiting with their daughter, Rabina. Have I got you two guys there? Are you there, yes, Lindsay, Marilyn? Yeah, yeah we're, we're here. We're here sitting in the back of the vehicle cooking, but... Uh, All cuddled up in the back here. Yeah, yeah that's more like it. That's... I... I, I <laughs> yeah, you behave yourself, Marilyn. Uh, I will. Because <laughs> you've got to keep an eye on that fellow. You, know, you never know what he might get up to in the, the back of a, a vehicle. <laughs> no, it's, been too, it's been too long, Alan. Oh, well. You got, it's good to have memories. <laughs> can I? Can we pick up where we left off? And the last time I, I spoke to you guys, you were, I think you're in Tweed Heads, uh, uh, sitting out the rain in sunny Queensland. It was, it was torrential, uh, if yes. I remember. Absolutely, Alan. You remember that the night that we recorded in the studio and then we drove home, well, it had started that afternoon and, and it was very heavy, although we had some, some breaks in the rain, but it rained all night. Mm. And then the next day, which was a Saturday, it, it really started to rain about uh, between 10 o'clock and lunchtime, I think it was. Mm. So we just sat in the in the van, shut the door, and we couldn't do anything because you could hardly hear yourself inside. Sure. And it rained pretty much all all afternoon, all night, very relentless. And mm. I think from the reports, we got something like 13 inches of rain in the old old um, gauge. Yeah, no, it was fabulous rain, and uh, we've had a we've had quite a heavy uh, wet season. So, you, so uh, when you left uh, Tweed Heads, tell me about what you did around Tweed. Did you get a chance to have a look at anything in the Tweed area at all? Yeah, there were a couple of things. There was the Captain Cook uh, Memorial, um, and, and it's, it's always a bit tricky for me, but you, you go to a lookout there, I think it's the Deacon. Uh, Beaton. Beaton lookout. Tom, Tom Beaton lookout. And you look out and you can look, you know, you can look south, down the beach and then you can look at Tweed Heads and then you look north, you look at somewhere else and then you look a bit further north and you see the Gold Coast. So, right. Um, just at, uh, what do they call that place where the where the uh, Captain Cook was? Um, Point Danger. Uh, da Danger Point. Danger Point. Point Danger, yeah. That's right. So that was there, so that was interesting. And right. then a little bit further around there's what they call Snapper Rocks where the oh, okay. surfers do their thing. Right. Uh, and that was the sort of thing. And we also left you there, Alan, a, 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 a pic picture of uh, the water lapping, going back a little bit and talking about the rain, lapping the, the edge of the caravan park. Um, but okay. it subsided very quickly. Right. Yeah, no, it drains off pretty quickly. But yep. Uh, yep. we've even um, gone up to that lookout, uh, Mary and I, and we've seen whales in the, as, yep. as they're going north and south. You can actually see them from up on that lookout, and uh, it's uh, it's quite amazing. But uh, so you, so you left uh, the Gold Coast area and you headed north. And uh, where did you go? I, was it Malula Bar or somewhere like that? Yes, yes. we did. Um, I need prompting yeah. sometimes. We went to Malula Bar. In fact, I love Malula Bar. I think it's one of the best beach fronts on 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 the coast. Right. Um, and again, Alan, these are all little, uh, I call them, you know, holiday leisure type places, but um, fantastic. Sure. No, Queensland's a big tourist state, as you know, and uh, they've spent millions and millions over the years attracting tourists to the states. And the north coast area, Malulaba and those places up on the Sunshine Coast are uh, uh, very attractive areas. Um, yep. Yep. So, so what did you do in the Manula Bar area? Well, well, not necessarily in order, Alan. Um, mm. We went went to the um, Etamoga Hotel, which is okay. Um, you remember that was the subject of a, sure. of a cartoonist. Yeah, no, um, I knew that. I knew that cockatoo that used to fly yep. over the Etamoga pub. Well, yep. <laughs> but it's just a, a fascinating place to go. We had lunch sure. and a beer. 
um, interesting there. And you've got a couple of photos, one of the pub and, and also the bar. Sure. Uh, very nice looking young lady behind the bar who served us. Um, they're not allowed to call it that anymore <laughs> because they're a big family argument. They sold it off oh, after goodness. The, the original owner died and uh, th they sold it to a big concern mm. and they are now refusing to let them use the, that the name. name. So, so oh, well, it's, it's, it's yeah, no, but it, if you drive past, you can't help but see no. this funny looking pub that's leaning over and nearly you're wondering if it's not falling over but uh, no it's so so what else did you do in the Manula bar area um, we went to uh, a boat club but that was at Harvey Bay for lunch oh, okay. um, a boat club meaning that they have these clubs as you well know sure this one was referred we went with friends because we stayed there with them which was very good uh, and also something dear to my heart is uh, what they call, uh, it's an ice creamery with 72 different <laughs> flavours, so I tried a couple of them. Sure, well, that's good stuff. That's, um, I've had a few of those in my day, as you can see. But, uh, yeah, it's it's the, the boating harbours. It's if you're a boating enthusiast, uh, what they, um, how they plan Queensland, they develop these harbours about a day sailing apart right the yep. way up the coast so if you come into brisbane you can sail north uh, for a day and there's a there's a beautiful harbor then you next day you can go another day sailing and there's another beautiful harbor so they're all up the queensland coast it's uh, it's very attractive yep it certainly is so what did you do um, after Harvey Bay? Did you, what, did you get any oysters or anything in Harvey Bay? No, no, I've, I've kept away from those. you got to um, stay away, particularly if you're going to be sitting in the back seat of the car a lot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. I need more than a dozen oysters, I can give you the tip. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we, uh, we, we stayed with friends overnight in Calliope. Uh -huh. I think that's the way you pronounce Calliope, it. Calliope, yep, that's the big coal place. Uh, yeah, and, and mm. if you if you ask me later about staying with people and friends, that that's a subject in itself, which is very good. But uh, then we we went to Clearview, and that's where Rabina came down and met with us, and we stayed there the night, which again is a little beach, a beachside caravan park, um, very pleasant. So where's Clearview? How far up is Clearview? I'm not familiar with Clearview. It's it's south of um, uh, Mackay. Mackay. Oh, it's south. Oh, it's there. okay. So you. <laughs> You went from Harvey Bay all the way up to... OK, now I know where you are. I thought... Uh, so you bypassed Rockhampton and Gladstone? Well, Calliope is, is just out of Gladstone. Just outside of Gladstone, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, we stayed there and then we... <laughs> Uh, about another 200 odd k up the road and uh, that was amazing um, it was almost like a, a caravan park that you didn't have to pay for they had absolutely everything there okay and 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 then from there we we went on up to um, Clareview and uh, Rabina drove down from from Cape Hillsborough which only took her about an hour I think um, okay so well, let's... And, uh, and joined us for the night fantastic let's break there and when we come back, let's talk about see, catching up with your daughter. Thank Can we you, do Alan. that? Yep. All right. I'm Alan Metcalf, and we're talking with Lindsay and Marilyn Criddle. They've been on a road trip from Perth in Western Australia, across the country and up the Queensland coast to visit their, their daughter, and there's a car going past on the highway. But uh, we'll be back in a moment. Stick with us. Hello, I'm Alan Metcalf. We're back again 
talking with the lovebirds in the back seat of their car. Somewhere in far north Queensland, Lindsay and Marilyn Criddle is there on their road trip across Australia and from Perth in Western Australia right up to far north Queensland where they're meeting up with their daughter, Rabina. Hey guys, thanks again for making the effort to do this uh, interview with us, I'm sure. I know lots of people are interested. I've I've had a lot of people asking me when can they have a look at it. And so uh, thanks again for doing it. You, uh, no thank you, Lindsay, thank you. The whole purpose of the trip was to catch up and see your daughter again. And um, so what's what's Rabina doing these days? Uh, Rabina is the um, office manager of the Cape Hillsborough National Park Caravan Park. Oh, okay. So the, well, that's convenient. By, yep. That's and employed by the owners there to, to manage the office. So that's what she does. Well, she's had lots and lots of experience of traveling around. She's like her mum and dad. She's a traveling girl. She... The last time we saw Rabina pass through the Gold Coast and she came into our studios, uh, she told us about her exploits and trips and she's uh, been around a lot of Australia, hasn't she? Absolutely, Alan. I think one of her big advantages is, is her travel because uh, at the front desk, of course, she can advise people or people ask mm. where to go and what to see. And because she's seen so much and, and had a lot of experience there, I think it's a a big benefit to uh, to that particular organisation, that caravan park. Yeah, no, it's um, it's information's critically important, and particularly if you can talk to people who have actually done it. And I think that's what a program like this is uh, this is all about. It's uh, there's lots of people who want to do the trip around Australia, but they really they need to talk to someone who's done it before. So to give them a bit of confidence that it's doable. So you, you guys haven't had any trouble. You've, you've had fun all the way, Play, stayed in lots of interesting places, seen lots of interesting things, correct? Yeah, we have, Alan, but uh, mm. the one thing we, we haven't done and a lot of people still love to do is go off-road. And that's where uh, Rabina, particularly up the, the north, the way up the north of Queensland, where there's a lot of areas you can go to see. But you really do need a, an outback uh, four-wheel drive and right. an off-road um, caravan or camper trailer. And, right. and because she's been there and done all that, she's she's uh, able to advise people whether they should go, how far they can go, right. uh, or whether they just shouldn't go at all. Because a lot of people don't really realise how uh, isolated it can be out there. Yeah, no, I that's my st old stamping grounds. I was born in Cairns and and grew up in northwest Queensland and so I um, I understand how many people don't really understand how remote it can be but if you if you've got the vehicle if you if you really know what you're doing it's it's a wonderful experience absolutely Alan it's it's mm. it's um, water fuel and uh, communications yeah that's what it's about so what have you been doing this week um, now that you've seen Rabina and that must have been fun to catch up after a while. How long had it been before you had seen until you saw her? Uh, she, she'd been home at Christmas time, Alan. Oh, so okay. It's, it's not that long, but right, it's... Right, about six months, yeah. Family. Right, almost six months. And, uh, yep. yep. The kids, you're, we all miss our kids, no matter how long they are away. And it's... Well, uh, it's it's great Doesn't to catch up. how old they get, Alan. They're still your kids. That's it. That's it. And uh, so, what have you been doing? You've been well. We've been extremely well looked after by the the owners of of um, Cape Hillsborough Caravan Park. Okay. And, uh, been made part of the family, really. And uh, Rabina's been we've been getting accustomed to what she does and what they do and how they do it, which is all interesting. Sure. And um, just and going some of the walks. There's about three lookouts there that we've we've done those walks now, um, and just getting acquainted really because on Monday we actually go to Keysbrook Island. Oh, okay. Days. Oh, that'll be fun. The islands oh, are the islands are beautiful off the Queensland coast. Yep. Yeah. 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 So how will you go across there? 
we'll fly over um, small aircraft. I take it. I don't think it takes any more than about 15 minutes. So okay, uh, it's just another experience which um, sure. we we'll look forward to and enjoy. No, no, you'll have lots of fun. It's um, beautiful. The islands and the Barrier Reef all up and down. No matter which one of the islands you have the good fortune to go to, they're all fantastic, aren't they? Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And I know Rabina's been to quite a few of them and she's had a, a great time wherever she's been. Right. Uh, off the Queensland coast, yeah. Yeah, so are you a fisherman, Lindsay? Well, I, I used to do a lot of fishing when I was a young man, but I certainly haven't done anything since, Alan. But yeah, I'm, it's always, I'm always interested in what people are catching or not catching or whatever, so I... Wherever we go and there's people fishing, I'm always interested to know what they're doing. Yeah, no, there's a lot of great fishing and great seafood and up the Queensland coast. And it's, um, you go to those islands and sometimes lots lots of those islands have fishing boats that you can hire or they go yep. out on excursions and, and um, a lot of them have whale watching uh, excursions when the whales are coming up and going back um, you can go out and watch them and get incredibly close to them lots of times and so what what's after the island what what's your plan for the next few weeks uh, well we're going to be here for a month so that when rabina has got a day off we'll most probably sort of do day trips like to Ely Beach and, and and other spots that she thinks is good we'll, we'll do those right otherwise we'll just uh, sort of enjoy what's going on at the park um, it doesn't matter what it is much um, we also enjoy cooking barbecues and all that sort of stuff yeah. um, and most people do or at least like eating what's on what we've cooked on it so yeah, it'll just be the, the the standard look around and that alan but it's all it's all good yeah no it's uh, where you are there of course just a little bit north or in that area Mackay and Mackay's the great coal port the export port for the vast coal reserves of the of the Bowen Basin and um, yep. so um, that's that town has become a, a big city today. Have you been into Mackay? Oh yeah well we've been previously when we we're over here and we we went in on the way up and did some shopping <laughs> and stuff like that but that's one of the things I look forward to is to go and have a good look at Mackay. Mm. Um, there's a few little jobs I've got to do on the van but you're not serious there are only maintenance stuff so uh -huh. you know got a an aerial missing because i backed into a tree and things like that which i happen mm. to do from time to time <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's great cattle country um i don't know whether you noticed as you were coming north um round past rockhampton and marlborough and up through that country wonderful cattle country there's some beautiful uh, alan i i love the cattle country whether mm. it's here or we're across Australia and um, mm. yeah it's, it's very pretty here because of the um, big hills and mountains and so on so the scenery yeah. is fantastic some of the and when you see the cattle grazing there it's terrific yeah some of the first Santa Catrudis cattle yeah. came into that area and uh, anyway look thank you uh, can you hold with us for a moment we're up against a break and when we come back I want to talk to you about staying with people no you, problems. All okay. right. Okay. Thank Th you. Thanks. Well, I'm Alan Metcalf, and this is Conversations, and we're talking with Lindsay and Marilyn Criddle about their road trip across Australia. We're going to be back in a moment. Please hold. Hello everyone, I'm Paul Higgins, and welcome to SafeWorlds TV, the global marketplace, the world leader in internet TV and semantic search, the home of free enterprise, the level playing field that all the world can use for electronic business. With SafeWorlds TV, every business in every country of the world can now be involved in the world economy. There are no barriers to entry. Even the poorest countries and the smallest businesses can be involved. The system is simple. 
Every country divides into 12 headline channels. Every channel is a gateway to an unlimited number of related community channels. Every community is a social network and a marketplace to sell products and services. There is no limit to the number of businesses that can be connected into a marketplace. There is no limit to the number of products you can sell. All our channels and marketplaces are designed to keep you entertained and to help you do internet business at a cost that everyone can afford. The amazing semantic technology that underpins SafeWorlds TV allows us to deliver this amazing system to the world. It allows us to accommodate millions of TV channels and marketplaces and to link them together into the global marketplace. The vast global marketplace that we are building is the final piece of the electronic global village. This is the ultimate achievement of the internet. What you see here now is only the tip of the iceberg of semantic services that are coming. Come now and see what we've already got. Choose any country of the world, then select the headline channel that you want to explore. Just point and click and follow the logical tree structure. We think you'll be amazed at what we already have in Safe Worlds TV. When you're ready, click on the button at the bottom of the screen and register to become a user. You can start immediately to create your very own internet TV channel. Enjoy the experience. I'm Paul Higgins for Safe Worlds TV. Hello, I'm Alan Metcalf, and uh, this is Conversations on Safe Worlds TV. And in this conversation, I'm talking with Lindsay and Marilyn Criddle, who are on a road trip across Australia in their little van and uh, their car. And they're up at, at this point in time, they're up in far north Queensland, visiting with their daughter, Rabina. And Lindsay, before for the break, we uh, indicated we wanted to talk to you about staying with people because you've said to me off camera that um, you've been really impressed with the hospitality of those people you've stayed with. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Alan. I, mm. I've got to go back a bit. We're on our third trip now with this van and we've mm. been up the west coast of Western Australia to Darwin. We've come across, uh, the first trip we did was three years ago now, I think, that we come across, two years, we come across the Nullarbor, up through Central Australia, across to Townsville, back down through uh, through to basically Adelaide and back home again. And in those two trips, we'd met people along the way um, from New South Wales and up the coast here. Uh, but it's interesting now that we've come to New South Wales and come up the coast, we've been able to visit those people. And the interesting thing about it is that you start to meet their, and stayed with them and you meet their families and then you realise what people do. They tell you what they did in their life and, and, and then you start to see the skills of people and that fascinates me because um, you just don't realise how many skills and what different skills, well, you, you might call them ordinary people, I don't think they are, but the people that have got all these skills to do all sorts of interesting things with. Sure, no, it's... Um... Well, Australians are very hospitable. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, the world over the years has probably got a little bit more unfriendly than it used to be, but still people everywhere make you welcome. I I know I, as I travel, I often go to America, and Americans love to come to Australia 
because it's so hospitable to them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something special to be able to go into people's homes, isn't it? And, oh, absolutely. Mm. Uh, Alan, I mean, the thing is, you know, once they get to know you a little bit, that they open their houses mm. to you and, and you meet their families and, you know, we, one, one was a policeman and his son looks, looks after bridges and, uh, and, and all sorts of things. You know, guys worked on mines and uh, right. now they renovate houses and, and just uh, the diverse range of... Uh, and uh, you'd call them everyday skills, I suppose, but, um, you know, it's, it's just great to see. So you've stayed, where you're staying now, you're staying in the, in the caravan. Yes, but, yep. But prior to that, you were staying with some folks down, where was, where was that last time? Now, Wollongong, we, we stayed in the van at a person's house, oh, okay. at their, so at people's houses. But again, mm. they welcome you into the house. We have meals mm. there and share it with their family mm. and so on. So that's that's terrific. And then uh, another one up in Harvey Bay, or other couple up in Harvey Bay. We actually stayed in their house. Okay. Uh, and they wouldn't have it any other way. And you know, we we um, hear of their family and and share everything they do, and it was it's terrific. Sure. I don't know how I'd get on because I get a bad habit of raiding the fridge at late <laughs> late hour. Well, I'm, we're pretty good at that too, Alan. But, You're um, good at that? We did a pretty good job of that too, Alan. Don't you worry. <laughs> it's, there's nothing more exciting than going through somebody else's refrigerator. <laughs> trying well, trying well, to find where the milk is or where do, <laughs> where do they hide this or the sugar. <laughs> if you have what a cup of tea or something. Yeah. But also, um, you know, people, what they cook and and sure. Uh, very good chefs out there, I can tell you. Yeah, no, no, it's, um, there's a lot of good Aussie cooks and it's more than just shrimps on the barbie, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. There's, there's plenty of skill out there and, and they, they know which bottle of wine to open too. <laughs> yeah, well, Australians have become very uh, astute with wines over the years because Australia today is one of the great wine producing countries of the world. And, and uh, yeah, we've done a wonderful job of it, or, or not we, they. Sure. Meeting our producers and, and winemakers and so on. Yeah, fantastic. Mm. Yeah, no, it's only a, and it's only a relatively new industry. It's, yeah. you know, it's not hundreds of years old, but uh, they produce some of the most fantastic wines in the world today. Australian wines, I think, people everywhere look for them now, and they're accepted. Well, the other thing, Alan, is they're, they're all over the country, one way or another, where they, they can be grown, and there's some wonderful wines made. And um, mm. uh, and the other thing is, I think Australians are very good at the use of technology. Yeah, no, we uh, we adapt, and uh, because uh, when you're in a country like this, you've you've got to be self-reliant, and uh, unlike other Australia is very competitive. What a lot of people don't realise is the the competitiveness of Australia because most people are well educated most um, being a very small country we can we can afford to lavish uh, education and so on and lots of people have taken advantage of that and um, they're, they're, they're even if even the remotest areas of the country you come across people who are pretty smart guys no oh, absolutely there's uh, mm. some I know on my channel, for argument's sake, I, there's, a, there's a family that own a big station up in the, the Territory and the work that they've done there on, on with water and with the use of water mm. and extending the, the extending the um, availability of feed for cattle and the increase in the numbers of cattle is just fantastic. So mm. I agree, uh, individual, small business, and we have to back them in. Oh, yeah, we do, and uh, it's the more we can tell the world about Australia, and that's one of the things with Safe Worlds TV that I hope eventually takes off, is that, you know, I grew up in the outback and I I understand the tyranny of distance and I, um, I, I hope and I hope we see the day when all sorts of uh, kids in the outback, young boys and girls on uh, on mission stations, all sorts of people, remote properties and that they've all they've all got their channels and they can tell their story to the world that's what the 
That's what I think the internet's really going to be all about. I, I hope it's about. Yeah, absolutely, Alan, because one of the, the big things we need more of and, and uh, to be better is, is the uh, communications, to be able to connect, mm. if I can put it that way. Uh, it's not good enough yet. No, and, and it's, it's a great opportunity for young people because I was talking to one of the church leaders recently who was telling me about the problems of isolated kids in isolated areas and they're getting onto drugs and getting all those pro, having, doing all those silly things that they don't need to do. There's so many interesting things that you can do and if we can only educate them and make them aware of these things and what you can do with communication these days. You know, it's, um, look, at where, look at what we're doing here. You're sitting in the back of a darn car somewhere up in the outback and <laughs> we're down here at the Gold Coast and the reception's fantastic. Yeah, I, I reckon if it works here in the back of the, the vehicle, Alan, it'll work anywhere. Particularly with, with uh, Marilyn distracting you there. Like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the, the distraction of life, Alan. Well, there you are. That's a nice distraction. <laughs> All right, guys, let's take a break. We'll catch up with you next time. We're going to uh, hopefully in a, in a week or so when we've uh, you've had a ha chance to go out the islands and that we'll uh, we'll do another uh, catch up and uh, until then have lots of fun. Thanks. We will. Thanks. I'm Alan Metcalf and this is Conversations. And we've been talking with Lindsay and Marilyn Criddle on their road trip across Australia and up the Queensland coast. Watch out for another Conversations on Safe Worlds TV.